it hurt, but I didn't know where I put it. <laughs> I dig it out every September. You want me to drive you in, Mary? Yeah. Okay. What's up, Monica? Feeling so emotional over the news of the 250 young children, babies whose remains they found in Tekemloops, Sikwaknik territory, in the residential school there. And we were talking about how it's validating all the stories we've heard and how painful this is for us. And then all these people started doing all of this, collecting roses, candles, shoes, Gladys and her friends made headbands for the survivors and everybody's coming out here to show their support for each other today. So I just wanna remember today that in our way, we're not, we're respectful to everything and everyone. We don't hurt anything or anyone. And that's what we want to remember today. Crimes against children are the worst kind of crimes there are. And so we're here to pray and sing. And we hope that our prayers and our singing will help help us and extend on to our, our relations. Junior and Damien Ketlo from Notley would like to say a few words. We're from the Notley Nation. My name is Johnny Ketlo Jr. 
I'm on this band council, as is my son Damien here, uh, the, the more famous one of the two of us. And uh, I thought that uh, uh, Chief Kazmir in, in Kamloops was, uh, must have been just devastated when this news happened to our community. And, and we're sitting on the same sort of ground that this is uh, uh, also a concerning place of, of, of despair. Uh, just if you look just two, three hundred feet behind you, you'll see a hole in the ground. That's where the school stood. I was a part of that demolition of that school. I was also part of uh, digging that hole over there to get that uh, um, all the bad feelings and stuff out of there. And the other day, the fence was down. I came down here. Well, this is about a week ago. I was very concerned that the fence blew over. And when I talked to Bev Tetlow about it, I said, we have to, we got to do something about that because uh, it looks bad. We, we, we are doing work over there and we're not, it's not complete. It looks ugly. So I came down here and I just I asked the maintenance people to meet me, but they, they, they weren't snappy enough. So I just went myself. And I put up six panels with a friend. I got that uh, thing back and I'm thinking to myself, why is this fence down? Why is there, why is there a problem here all the time? There, there's always a negative feeling here. And the reason must be because this, this chapter is not finished. And we've been trying to get funding to finish this, this rehabilitation of this place off and it's just not happening. And to me, I think it's an unfinished chapter of spirit still here that, that are getting our attention to say, you know what, you, you got unfinished business here. Uh, we're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna be hearing some news and two days later, Check. this happened with uh, Kamloops. And I'm thinking to myself, once this healing is done in this, the, these lands here, this place is gonna, is gonna flourish again, but it's gonna take all the nations of everybody in Canada and BC and places beyond to, to make this place heal again because this place is not ready to heal until we make it heal. And so glad to see everybody here. It's, it's very, very encouraging that uh, I see the impact that it's not just us bearing the, the grief and despair of, uh, of, uh, of this, this bad, bad memories to this place. <clears throat> I got dad stories, but that's for another time. And Martin and I went to school here very briefly, but I did that talk in another talk. And I'm just thinking to myself, you know what, this is not about us, this is about beyond us. It's about our grandfathers and our, my dad and uh, my stepmother, Norma, and uh, people like her uh, that are, some of whom are buried over here, they go as far as Telegraph Peak that are buried in that cemetery. Fort St. James and Takla and everywhere. You know, it's like uh, McGasley. Uh, this is Fort St. James. Uh, oh, yeah, then, I meant to say. Uh, Stalako. Uh, everybody's got, there's non-native and native people buried in that cemetery. Along with the people that cause us the grief. Some of them are in there too. So, I, I don't want to go on too much about this. Uh, it is some, a talk I'd like to do another time on, on, on uh, less uh, sensitive notes, but I do welcome you and it is heartfelt that we are here today uh, and I just want to share the grief with you. I wore my orange today. This is not about us, like I say, so I know I never wear orange, but today is a day that you make an exception for this. So it's about the children, it's about everybody, it's about all of the people that suffered here. And, uh, looking at some of you that did, just seen Za here a little while ago, his wife's over there in the cemetery. I said hello to her already, and uh, I know what Zaz thinking. So those people went to school here, and uh, those are the ones that really suffered. We, we didn't suffer hardly. We were lucky. They're the ones that paid the price. So with that, I'd like to uh, pass this to my son Damien here to uh, say some words that he may have to say to you, and uh, feel welcome here, but it's raining for a reason not supposed to be perfect today there's uh we have to do little penance for this and that rain is just a little bit of the penance that we have to do thank you very much folks thanks dad um 
Howdy, my name is Damien Kello here from Nollywood 10. Um, thankful for everybody coming onto our traditional territory in regards to the 215 kids found in Kamloops Residential School. I know we've had our people who have gone to Kamloops Residential School and obviously in our backyard here in the Jack. Um, words cannot, I cannot say any words that express to what our people have gone through. You know, there's these 215 children, but in the grand scheme of things, that number is ever counting. It's way bigger than that. And I'm not trying to take anything away from Kamloops Residential School. I'm just saying that in the utmost respect. That the conversation is out, but there are many things that are still being swept under the rug. So I thank everybody here for being here today to get that conversation going and keep the momentum. I did not go to residential school, but I've heard countless stories. My dad, my grandpa, and so on. So, that being said, I would just like to start the day to pay respect with a temporary moment of silence before I finish, um, starting now if we can. Thank you. All right, in closing, um, it's hard for me to keep this together, and I didn't even go to residential school. Uh, I feel the pain of our people and beyond throughout the nation of Canada and throughout the world. You know the things that have gone against with the Crown, Great Britain, colonization, assimilation, the Catholic Church. This conversation is, uh, is long, so I just ask our people to uh, be there for each other in this time. You know, our current uh, residential school survivors are people who have been affected through intergenerational trauma, who have had this passed down the lane. Uh, and uh, finally, you know, those 215 children and beyond. So today, when we sing our traditional song and dance, I ask that we uh, sing with all our heart and soul so that those up above who could not be here with us today, who never came home, can hear us. Natalia. And we just have to ask uh, Chief Robert Michelle to come up from the store First Nation. Thank you. Uh, thanks for everyone uh, coming out today. It's it's uh, it's a pretty good crowd for a very short notice. I think I saw on social media this thing kind of flared up Thursday night. And by today, look at the crowd, and there's still people coming in, which is which is great to see. Um, on behalf of my First Nation, welcome to uh, to the grounds of the Jack. We have our elders and people here from our community and council members who are here to be a part of this process to try and bring, I guess, some awareness as to what we've known for years. So. Thank you and welcome, and I hope the message doesn't stop today and it carries on across the country. We'll see. My sister is going to sing a hymn for us right now, and then we're going to sing some songs. Masicho. Healing is um, spending time doing cultural things is really healing for me. Going out, berry picking, and doing crafts that you know, my was passed on to me from my mother and my grandmother. Um, Ave Maria, or Indo Maria, is a very emotional song for our people, but it's also healing to bring up those emotions, and um, I'm grateful that those are the, these are the songs that my mom, who survived residential school, and um, my stepfather, George George, and my grandmother taught me. So, um, I want to say the most beautiful thing is when you can hear us all singing together. So I welcome everybody who feels up to it to join with me in singing Ave Maria.
school survivors who are with us and especially our elder um, Margaret Antoine from Sykes. I want to also acknowledge all of the, the children who are here with us today. I think about the 215, 15? 215 um, children and, and the legacy that was lost. I can't imagine, um, you know, um, the lineage that uh, they would have brought, 215 families and generation lost. I want to honor them today um, as we were here together. And uh, like um, Damien said earlier, this is only one school in Canada. Just imagine all of the other residential schools in Canada and all of the lost children that we don't know of yet. And I do think this is just the tip of the iceberg and I don't think we should stop here. I think it, we need to um, go further um, to find all of our lost children so that maybe we could, um, we could rest and maybe we could, um, and maybe they could rest. So I just wanna thank you and acknowledge Again, all of our elders and um, all of our children that's here today. Thank you for um, letting me speak, Awitza. Oh, hard day today. And it's been a hard couple of days for a lot of people. It's been tears. It's been anger. It's been hurt. It's been sadness. And I think as soon as people say we're going to start healing, we get another blow like this. These children everywhere across Canada need to be found. And until they are, we're not going to heal properly. We're going to have open wounds wherever we go. So I thank you for coming out and acknowledging these children and the children yet to be found. It's very hurtful to me that these children died without someone beside them who loved them, who shed tears for them, and who provided ceremony when they passed over to the next world. I'm just heartbroken, and I know all of us are. And I just thank you so much for coming out today and sharing this emotional, healing, heartbreaking day. And uh, I'd just like to thank Susan Crooks for uh, giving us names of the people who went to Kamloops Residential School that came home. Rose Johnson Antoine, Edward Antoine, it's Stanny, Michael Antoine Stanny, Mary Jane Antoine Stanny, James T. Prince is Danny, Beth Sam, Cecilia Ketlo Sam is Danny, Norma Ketlo is Danny, Jesse Sam is Danny, <clears throat> Sally Joseph, Isaac, Jeannie Trombley, Amy Leon, Angie Todd Dennis, Susan Crooks, Winnie McKinnon is Danny, Virginia Lazar is Danny. These are the ones we know of. There are some that we haven't been able to identify at 
yet at this point. And uh, I'm hoping over the next while that more people will uh, take on this cause and, and really look uh, right across Canada. Thank you. Chief Maureen Luggy, Wet'suwet'en First Nation. Um, Councillor Heather Newski is here and she's a descendant of Natlewaden and so I would like her to speak before me. Denise Zakoze Skyze Saisozi Heather Newski Sunet Marlene Ogin Sebet John Newski Sunet Nagwaon or So Nagwaon Sophie Ogin Seats Mitch Ogin Zatnian I'm from the Gidim Den, Dista, the House of Spokes. I'm very honored to be here today and to be speaking in my language. I am a descendant of the Notley Den. I know um, this is something that's always been on my heart. It's very heartbreaking to see that our worst nightmares are true and that our people are reliving it again. And I'm praying for all of the survivors, for everyone that's here, Masai, for being here, for the survivors and for the families that are affected by this. It's splashed all over social media, everywhere you can see it. And I'm glad to have seen that Justin Trudeau had asked everyone to put their flags at half mass. And I would just like to acknowledge, I know my grandmother, Sophie, had went to the Jack School. I love you, Grandma. And I'm proud to be here and to be supporting her. I would say, say. Stealing what we had, stealing our land, stealing our resources, stealing our language, our children, through generations of trauma, and he has definitely come to kill, and that's why we're here today, is because 215 children are buried in other lands in, within British Columbia, and he has come to destroy us, but our people are very resilient, our elders are strong, and I also acknowledge the late James Sampson, who came here to residential school in the Jack, and um, the late Jackie Tom. We've had disclosures in our community of men and women who have endured sexual abuse, physical abuse here on these lands at the Jack Residential School. We have been sending our people to the Hoffman process, to choices, to uh, different uh, transformations programs to try to understand what it is that we're trying to heal from. And it has not been perfect at all, but neither has our past. And so I join all of you today, and I know that the love that we have for our people is here with the leaders, with the elders, with the children, with the parents, the mothers and fathers. I'm grateful that um, although I was sent away to Prince George College at the age of 12, I didn't want to go, but I was uh, sent, sent there at the age of 12 and I came home at 17 or 18. I didn't know my parents. Uh, I was back for two weeks at Christmas. I was back for June or July and August. And so you could see how um, families could be divided and families could um, lose their way of life and their language because they're not with their biological parents. Some of us who attended that college were raised by people from England, from Scotland, from Ireland, from the United States. And that's who parented us as we grew up. Those were very precious years. And um, so I just acknowledge all of these things as I was coming here. And when I got to Ndako, I, I really started to grieve for our people. And I know that um, I know that I personally have overcome many things in my life and 
uh, I, I choose to walk in forgiveness because I feel that there's power in forgiveness and that I'm not going to give anyone the, the satisfaction from, I'm not going to give the churches and governments the satisfaction of allowing or allowing them to watch me grieve and live my life in a, a way that is not productive. And so I want to honor my mother. I want to honor my grandmother, my great grandmother. I want to honor my children, my grandchildren, and the future generations by being a person who is committed to healing. And I want us our community to lead by example and to encourage the healing of our people, to encourage the healing of our lands. And I'll stop here and I just wanna say thank you to all, all of you for being here because I, I didn't know what to expect. I knew that our community members were coming here and I knew I had to be here. And I I sincerely appreciate Not Lewa Den for hosting us, for having us come here today and I just pray that this would be a place of healing, that um, we would also discover here on these lands what has taken place, and that this would become the headquarters for healing for all of the generations that have been here on these lands. I believe that's possible, and thank you very much. God bless you. Ms. Erickson and my late mother, Sally Prince, attended the residential school, along with her brothers, Paul Prince, William Prince. Her sister Seraphine died here, and her sister Rose Prince died in hospital in Vanderhoof. During the years that she attended, she <clears throat> often spoke of the horror of having to grow up here. And so with the Kamloops Residential School, I just wanted people to know that the reason a lot of people from all over BC attended Kamloops was it was the first high school that Indians were allowed to attend. Prior to that, Indians weren't allowed to go to school after grade eight. My late father-in-law, Joe Michelle, attended the residential, Kamloops Residential School and he was born in 1929. He was part of the first graduating class there. I figure it was about 1945 when he graduated. He went on to become a, a teacher and he wasn't allowed to teach anywhere in a public school. He was only allowed to teach at Kamloops Indian Residential School. He taught there with uh, another teacher by the name of Mabel Carone. That's Dr. Nadine Caron's mother. She was a Ojibwe woman. <clears throat> and so the graves that are in Kamloops are not only Shuswap, but First Nations from as far as way as, as the Yukon territories and from nations throughout BC and the Yukon and the Northwest Territories. And we need a lot more answers and I think that we need all of the graveyards, sorry, not the graveyards, the schoolyards of the residential schools across Canada need to be searched for bodies. This is just the beginning as Chief Maureen Lugie said. And one of the things that I can't, I can't comprehend right now, um, I work as a lawyer and this to me doesn't seem like it's being treated like a crime scene. I don't see the area ribboned off. I don't see anybody like the RCMP um, taking command of the site. And I really think that we need to get the United Nations involved. We need United Nations observers because this is a crime against humanity. And not enough people are describing it as that. Yesterday, I was on social media on Facebook asking that the Prime Minister please lower the flags to half mast. When the Humboldt bush crash happened, there were 16 kids and all of Canada came to a halt. And yet when we find 215, 215 bodies of children, that are not all identified, we don't get that same point.
pause and we have to ask that the mask be lowered. I just wanted to make sure that people know a bit of the background about the residential school and why many, so many of us are stricken because we all had people that attended there. And the late Joe Michelle, my father-in-law, always asked about his students, Charlie Sam, Cecile Sam, Angie Todd Dennis, all the different students that were carrier that attended there. So I, I could go on and on, but I really think that we need to amp it up and we need the United Nations to conduct the investigation. The RCMP were complicit in these crimes. They were the ones that took the kids. So they are not, I don't think, able to conduct such a serious investigation of this kind. I'm so glad to see all of the people that have come out today and, and the people such as Mavis who are the historians. Um, the next piece right now that we're going to do is we're going to have um, elders Roy Newski, Archie Patrick, Dennis Patrick, Martin Louis come and do um, prayers here today. The first part of this ceremony is um, uh, very sacred to us. So we ask you all please to um, turn off any devices. Media, even the RCMP and everybody else is going to think about this this weekend. Mm -hmm. By Tuesday, it's going to fade. Let's not do. Let's not that, let that happen on our minds. Yep. Not with us. There was 215 children buried down there. There are children buried here, and there are our people buried all across this country because of Lijan and other residential schools. It is up to us to shake all that and to become a spiritual people, a loving people, a trusting people again. I would say, let's see. Anybody that wants to join uh, to sing some songs in honor of, of the events that have taken place in Kamloops and that we all know across our nation. We just want to use our, our drums as prayer, our voices, to lift up everybody to remember uh, those who are not with us today, the survivors that are with us today, and like myself, the children of the survivors. All these songs are for all the survivors and all those who went before us.
Lewis over there. We also have Peter Louis in the crowd that will smudge males. We also have some professional counselors on site, should you need. We have Richard Sampson. Wave. We also have Penelope Newdorf. Penelope, where are you? We also have Katie Gable. Back there. We also have Jamie Porgay. Um, and we have Lydia Thomas. Okay. <laughs> they do have um, like a ribbon around their around their arms or whatever, so you'll recognize who they are. If you do need to go and talk to them, they're available. Thank you. Just to explain these roses, these roses are for everybody. Um, they were kindly donated by Pignata. We had 215 roses by that Pignata contributed, and then we also have three dozen from Vanessa Louis. These are for everybody. We also have some roses set aside for people that have passed on that have attended Kamloops Residential School, and we there's quite a few. FYI.
one of the survivors in the middle. So, I lied, I lied, I lied. I said we're going to do a medley, but we're so out of practice with this, we need to breathe in between songs. So we're taking little breaks. Can we have all the survivors come to the middle? Can we have all the survivors come to the middle so that we can honor? Can we um, ask for help to um, help move their chairs? Sit, sit, um, in the front here. And so the fact that we have a system and have these songs here today is, is a miracle. Really? <laughs> oh my god, my leg is so much
tears in my eyes. I just, I just started crying. Because our people have been talking about these issues for so long to ears that would not listen. And the only time that they're going to listen is when they see actual evidence. So now, there's going to be no more deaf ears. Our people are hurting. But we're a strong people. You all know that, right? We survived everything that they threw at us. Everything. And we're going to survive much more because right now I'm angry but at the same time my hand is reaching out to the non-native people brothers and sisters that don't understand what we went through the hell that they put us through but our people we were never taught to be like that. Everything on this earth, this mother of ours, was relevant. You all know that, right? And I hear that we have to go back to who we are and to cling to who we are. And I'm, I just love that singers that went, that sang, and it bring my heart back up. My heart that is crying right now. I want to say to the people of Kamloops, the descendants of those little ones, I pray for you, we pray for you, we hurt for you. But one thing that you have to remember, such survivors, it was not our fault. We were children. We had no control over what happened to us. It was them, the caretakers. They took our childhood, our innocence, our dakhetness. But like I've heard so many times people say again and again, we're survivors. We'll survive everything and we will go on and we will hold our hands out to the people that want to learn from our people how it is to live in harmony with the great Earth Mother, Awetza. Drumming and singing is the only thing that I know how to do to heal and to move forward and to move through this and to connect with all the people who want to understand. We have music, the universal language of music. And I want to share a song with you right now that is for the children. I watched those kids swinging on that playground over there. And it really, it really touches me because they remind me of those 215 children. And they remind me of my grandchildren. I have 10 grandchildren. I have four children. And being here in this space, with all of you and listening to all of the speeches, to all of the heart conversation. These are, we're not talking from our heads here. None of us are talking from our heads when we're standing here. We're all talking from our hearts. We're all talking from blood memory. 
All of our ancestors are standing with us right now. We are an army of people right now. And I want to share a song in honor of all of these little souls that we need to bring home and we need to find out their names so we could start saying their names. This song is, is a song that brings that innocence back. It brings the joy back in us because we are a happy people. We are a humorous people. I know two ladies over here that really know how to make people laugh. Lalette and Suga is here somewhere. Let's hear it for Lalette and Suga. <laughs> Drumming and singing is our medicine. And I want to share some medicine right now. So this song has some actions in it. And we carry things in our bodies. So I encourage you all to play along right now with these actions. It's very easy. And it goes like this. All right, hold on, hold on. Let's get the rhythm. Let's um,
to school. <laughs> Programming and through Heritage Canada, through uh, ideas. I was there. 1999, it was approached by three bureaucrats to say, in Vancouver, to say, do you know anything about residential schools? And I said, I heard about such schools. And he said, but no, you went to a, you went to a school and uh, it has had, had, had an effect on you. He said, how do you know that? We just know. But can you help us? Can you help us? So the government was coming, they say, come and help us. And uh, created a model and template in, uh, in Vancouver that became the core, a core model for, uh, for funding in Canada that's still used today. And that's all at the same time when they had the white pages before the 94 recommendations. And what happened was the, uh, the that was the initial $500 million that was into, put into uh, programming to start the initiative. And, uh, you know, there was a, uh, but the truth be said, and to keep it short, is that I wanted to know the truth. And the truth is going to set us free. The truth is going to set us free. And those children, they're rising up. And they're still with us today. They're here. And all of us. And all of our families. There's, there's no separation in any families here. We're all connected as one. And we have to stay together like it's been said. There's anger, there's hurt. But together we're strong. And we're stronger together. So when you go home and you feel like you're alone, reach out. Reach out to one another and always remember what we did here today. Because this is just a start. Because now we need a deeper healing. What we had was just a surface healing. But those children will never be forgotten. And what happened here will never be forgotten. And I say this in honor of my Coco, who went to residential school all of her life and protected many children and brought us up to protect people. I come from the Paquette family. In honor and respect of my father who just passed. You know, and uh, I had uh, recently, I had the strongest uh, COVID that was a UK version with a 117 and overcame that. But I used the traditional ways and came back even stronger with our traditional medicines and healing. So our, our ways are, are powerful in healing. And we have to use those. We have to use them. We got a lot of young men who are very wise and their ways are very strong and very passionate that are going to help lead. And we have to. We got elders out there who have a lot of knowledge. We have to listen to their stories and listen to their wisdom. A lot of them aren't here with us, but their wisdom is inside of our heart. We have to share that knowledge with one another. We have to protect our culture. We have to protect our ways. But most important, we have to learn to love each other and we have to learn how to forgive in my teachings and the way I was brought up that medicine wheel doesn't work just with one side we have to teach the ones who have done this to us the right way so we can heal together and be a stronger family called humanity may the Creator watch over each and every one of your families and your children that's where it starts. Help them rise up, support them, and love them, and guide them in a new way. Because those people who are out in the streets in our communities, those are our people. And they're out there, they have a home. And I asked to leave them alone. Because those are our people. That's the, that's the home that they have right now. They're looking for answers, and the answers are here, and we have to share that. We have to reach out to them and let them know that they're loved. It's important. Just recently was, was asked to, uh, to be an advisor for the anti-racism of the Provincial Committee here in the province of British Columbia. So I was on a couple Zoom meetings. Don't know too much about this technology stuff. But I've told them, I'm going to hold them to the, to the sacred fire and to tell the truth. So we can get this work done because the work is just the beginning of the hurt 
It's just the beginning of change. But we have to rise up together as a family. God bless you. Over on that side, there was a cemetery they should be looking into. Because I played here hockey when I was 10 years old. Here in Lee Jack. I went inside the building. In this school too in Makalada, they gave us a hard time. In 1966, I'm here for my sister, Clara Alec, was killed at the Makalada in school, outside, inside the school. Till this day, When these 215 were found, my heart was reopened, my scar, and what we went through too. They used us a leather strap 10 times, 12 times on each hand. They used a ruler on us when our hands down like this both sides of our hand. They're trying to take away our language. They're trying to take away our land. But this, till this day, I still remember too, for all those survivors, I know how it feels. And it hurts inside of us. It hurts inside of me. We should do good things for these young kids now. They don't know how bad that every one of us will went through. And it's not right for them to do that to us. We're all on this earth. God put us on this earth to love one another, to work together, to move on. It says our language and our skin color are different. That's where I said in Edmonton, in 2017, when I spoke about murder and missing women, they got me up this, uh, that morning next day. They interviewed me, CBC. All these things that I said back then, like I'm telling you right now. And they told me, they asked me, is there anything for you to, Justin Trudeau, and I said, Justin Trudeau, you're listening to me. My father was in Ottawa dealing with your dad. Now you're going to listen to my words. It's about time you stand up. You help our, all of our First Nation people, murder and missing women, and all the children, and all the housing that we are dealing with it right now. My son at home. There's for a reason. He has three kids. He has a roof, orange roof over his house because the leaking rain's leaking into his roof, into his bedroom. And now he probably put it on Facebook. That's how this thing is. No matter where you look, each village, it's about time you chief and counselors have to help standing up to your members, whatever they need. From this day, I'm still going to be talking about for everybody on this earth. Enough is enough for all of us. We're tired of running around for our kids, worrying about stuff. They have nothing to do, drugs and alcohol, that's all they do. It's about time that discrimination has to stop too and for that hockey player in Edmonton it wasn't his fault that's discrimination there it's still there so Masai Charles for our drum Nick Babi in here as the hereditary chief my name is Nasiyah Ronnie Alec I come from both places up in Takla and Lake Babin so Thank you.
And he's good at this kind of stuff. Okay. I just help him. Yeah. Okay. Right but I'm I'm interested too. I'm Johnny. Johnny Cutlow. I do communications, movies, videos, documentary. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> good to meet you, Jake. Some of the hereditary chiefs, there was um, items that was left over from the weekend. A lot of um, uh, little bears, shoes, flowers, and everything like that. And we're just going to um, we're going to burn them for burn them. Have a burning ceremony for, for the kids with all those uh, stuff that they left behind over here, and just offer it to them. Just uh, make sure that we close a lot of the stuff that's going on with our people. And this is one way that we we, um, we honor our, our dead. We, we give them gifts through fire. We usually bring them food, Martin. We usually burn the food for them, but I didn't bring any food today. We burn for our, our dead all the time, the food especially. And that, uh, that's what my sister was explaining. But um, these uh, these things, it's... Uh, need to burn because uh, they were left for the children that they were that they found. And I don't know how much thousand other children are are happening right across Canada. We we have to start something. We have to start something new and do it our own way. We can't we can't afford to wait for somebody to help us anymore. And so a lot of these um what are we gonna burn is just for us that's here, we can't fill them into anything, so and we'll just um, leave it at that and then we'll talk a little, we're going to have a discussion among some of the hereditary chiefs about our next step and what we're going to do next, um, because it's up to us as hereditary leaders to move, move forward. Um, a lot of the elected leaders, organizations, they're all bound, bound by by policy and regulations of the Canadian government in it. <laughs> you have a hard time trying to work for your people when you have regulations to try to guide you. And we don't have regulations. We never were. Uh, not least the LACO, the carrier people in BC has never been, um, land has never been ceded. We still own the land. We still own everything on the land. 
So it's time for us to speak up. We basically had enough. The spirits of these young people came back to give us that strength, and that's the strength we're going to move with. Thanks. Okay. The teddy bears are going to go to help the spirits go back to the burning insects. Little babies. Smoke them up, they're gonna burn them. It's a beginning, it's a beginning of the healing. With coyote. Especially when we have to be that council, that government council that changes things back to the old ways. These little children, 215 of them, are only the tip of the iceberg. I got a funny feeling. These little children are the ones that are gonna make us change this government and don't be afraid in your own villages and your own councils your own government councils don't be afraid to start rattling start rattling the cages test the system a little bit don't don't be afraid you know you're not supposed to do this you're not supposed to do that you're not supposed to do that they keep telling you that and everybody just listens you know it goes on and on and on we can never progress because we just, we got all these damn rules that just keep on stopping us. <clears throat> I'm tired of it. I, I, I'm, I've been butting heads with my own council about these things. You know, it's a conflict of interest. It's this, it's that, you know, like this goes on and on and on and on. It's impossible not to have a conflict of interest when you're in an Indian community. Every one of us is related. How the hell are we gonna conduct meetings if we're all worried about a conflict of interest? You know, we might as well just sit there and just turn into a bunch of turnips if, if, if we're worried about every little rule. So I'm, I'm tired of it and uh, I've been scolded by a few of my own councils saying, don't think that way, don't think that out loud. We gotta follow these rules. I'm tired of that. It's, it's time. It's time to not to be so chicken about things. Test it. You know, the RCMP, they just keep pushing you. They know you got rights. This Chilkootin court case, for example, Everybody was crying and everybody was jubilant with joy when that thing happened. Martin told me he's pulled over the side of the road and cried. Supposedly, that's supposed to give us the power to go forward. To me, it sounds like it's a weapon that we can use. We, got, we get a brand new M16 machine gun and we, we look at it and we don't even know how to use it. You know, <clears throat> how come these chill court and court cases and all these other court cases, how come they're not being used if it's such a jubilant celebration why is it not being used as a weapon sounds like we got the weapons in our hands and we're just wondering how we can pull that hammer back to use it to me I don't know I'm tired of following the rules of, of uh, just not uh, you know we, we get we get put down on Facebook we get we get bashed around for geez you know everything and all we're trying to do is help everybody sort this mess out. And you know, you gotta quit fighting us a little bit and help us work toward, I wanna work with the hereditaries because we all come from that. We can't stop thinking that way. And Martin Louis said it all today in, in his words, a lot of you have. And it's like, it's high time we, we move on. We can't, we can't just run and hide under the porch like an old whipped dog anymore. We have, to, we have to do something about it. I'm not afraid to break any of these colonial rules to tell you the truth right now. I am ready. I got a D8 cat at home. I told Martin Louie, take that D8 cat at home and put it on the railroad track. Let's see. Let's see what happens. It was his idea actually to stop. He says, you'll get attention. I believe that. So I think we got to start getting ballsy like that again. Uh, I keep mentioning Martin because it, to me, he was the last colonial chief smacked around provincial government by dropping all those trees up in the Dog Creek Road to make a statement to, to try to give us some rights to fight. By doing that, he almost got himself thrown in jail. I remember that. And all of his, all his followers were just as worried as he was, but they, they stood by him. And uh, <clears throat> that's the kind of leadership we have to, we have to be. Take a chance. You might get thrown in jail overnight. National News is only going to let you stay in there two days and they're going to, they're going to let you go. So I'm ready to go to jail. <laughs> Thanks very much, everybody, for coming. <laughs> Beautiful to see everybody.